Hi there. This is the uh, third time I'm attempting to make this video. I've been running into a technical difficulties using QuickTime Player for Mavericks. So um, I'm going to show you guys how to pull off this technique, which I posted to Twitter and YouTube, and uh, basically showing you guys how to use dynamic lighting, or sorry, statically computed light maps for scenes which have soft shadows and ambient occlusion and other advanced lighting techniques, and actually to bake those into a light map and then display those scenes on Virto Studio for iPad, which currently doesn't yet have the ability to do shadowing and ambient occlusion. So it's kind of a way of cheating to get some really nice lighting effects on your scenes that you run on Virto Studio for iPhone and iPad. So let me go ahead and go into Blender and show you guys um, how I pulled this off. Like I said, this is the third time I've done this video, so I already have all this stuff here, so I need to kind of kill it and start over. I'm really hoping I don't run into additional technical difficulties um, dealing with the fact that I already did all this. So um, let me first turn off everything. So this is the scene that I made. Uh, like I said, this tutorial is not about learning how to use Blender. It's about learning how to do this technique if you have a scene that you made that you can import into Blender. Blender itself is a very hard to learn program that has a very high learning curve. And um, that's all I'm really going to say about that. So uh, let me just real quickly make sure I don't have any leftover crap I do from everything in my scene for my first tutorial. Okay, so once you have your scene the way you like it, what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to um, do a couple things. You're going to go to the render panel. Oh, once again, I forgot to mention this. Uh, before you even get started, you need to be using the very latest, I mean like two weeks old version of Blender. And you're going to go into your preferences and you're going to go to add-ons and you're going to search for the texture atlas and enable it. This plugin's what makes doing this whole thing so much easier. So UV texture atlas, you got to enable that. Then you load your scene up, you or you create it any way you want. You have everything you want just the way you, you like it, the light position where you want it. Um, you make sure that your light is at least casting some kind of shadows. I went ahead and did ray shadowing. And uh, I don't know how to do soft shadows off the top of my head in Blender, but if those are turned on, these, those will show up too. I'm going to go ahead and do a switch this real quickly to um, rendered mode, which will actually show me what the scene looks like. Um, I have ambient occlusion turned on right now too, which actually makes the scene look really bright and makes the shadows look just really subtle, which is really cool. Uh, I'm going to dial that down though for this particular tutorial. That's in the world settings under ambient occlusion. And I'm going to set it to multiply, and that'll give us a much more subtle effect. Uh, you can still see the shadows, but you can also see the ambient occlusion as well. So going back to flat mode so we can get some uh, work done. I'm going to select everything that is a mesh type. It's very important that we don't select the lights for this example because the, uh, the UV Texture Atlas plugin is not very smart, and it's going to hang up on the fact that you're trying to apply texture into a light or a camera. So what you do is you select select by type, mesh, only the meshes, and then you go over to your texture atlas tool and you hit plus, create a new default texture atlas. It takes a few seconds, it's kind of slow. Once that appears, you are going to select your light map resolution. I know Virto can handle 2048 and even higher, so we're going to go with a really high res light map. I'm going to select light map. We're going to add everything we've selected to our group. That's really important because then we can go back later and select this group quite easily. I'm just making sure that is a group. Um, and now this is important. I go to auto unwrap. And what that does is it actually generates the light map and, at least I think it's going to, um, everything, all the texture coordinates that are going to be used for that light map. Uh, it's kind of magic. It's the way you can think of it. So we got all that going. Um, in my render settings, if I can find them, which I can't, I have shading, that's what it is. I've turned off textures. I do this so we don't get a light map feedback during the uh, texture baking process, so I've done that. Uh, now that I have everything selected, I thought I did, I select group, I hit bake. So let's just go ahead and wait for the bake to finish. Uh, I think it did, so if I switch this thing, over to game mode, which will do some live rendering, and then switch it to multi-texture, and switch this to texture. 
we can see that I have a very awesome looking uh, scene which I can actually view from any angle which is pre-computed lighting. Uh, it's a little dark but I think that's okay for the sake of this tutorial. Um, I could turn up the ambient occlusion a little bit and do one more bake so if I go back to render mode and go to ambient occlusion and uh, turn up the factor maybe to 1.5 let's see what happens and then let me just real quickly make sure that what I'm gonna get looks nice um, it's not bad 1.5 huh see what happens if I go with 2.5 Oh, I see, because it's multiplying, it's actually uh, more is less. So let me actually switch this to say maybe be 0.5. That's pretty good looking, I think. I'm going to go 1.2. And then I'm going to rebake. So I'm going to go back to textured mode. And go here, and I'm just going to make sure I've selected my group and hit bake again. Let's wait for it to finish. Need a little progress bar up there. Can't really read it though. It really takes a while to do this. It really didn't seem to make that much of a difference, but um, once you get everything dialed in, you know you can you can export. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this scene. If you have Virto Studio for Mac, which I do, you would go directly to DAE because it's a better format. If uh, you don't, then you're going to do all the steps I'm about to do actually on your iPad using the Virto Studio editor on your iPad. It's kind of the same idea. And you're going to pick OBJ in that case. But I'm going to do this on my Mac, so I'm going to select DAE. And um, I had a folder called YouTube for the first time I did this, but I'm going to make a new one and call this YouTube 2. And I'm going to put the scene in there. So I'm just going to call this YouTube 2. I exported my Colada scene. It's very important to also save out the, um, the texture atlas image. I actually think I'm going to hit save, not save as. So it saves it. And I'm going to do save as image. I'm going to call this texture atlas. And this is actually in the YouTube 2 folder. So I'm going to do that. It saves out our 2048 by 2048 uh, texture, or uh, light map texture. And I'm going to go over to Virto Studio and now actually open up. I guess there was nothing in there anyway. Open up our DAE file. I'm just going to right click it, open it with Virto Studio's latest version. And then we're going to go full screen. Uh, first thing I notice is kind of small, so I'm going to scale it up. Usually when I export from Blender, I got more than one object group, but I kind of lucked out in this case. I only got one. Makes things a little simpler. I'm going to move it up above the grid, which I've done. Uh, it's important to note that this light is not really useful because we're actually going to self-illuminate, and all of our lighting has been pre-computed by our light map. So now that I got this, uh, actually I'm going to go out of full screen here for a second. I'm going to drag our texture light map texture directly into the scene is and then as you can see I actually have now got my awesome looking ambient occlusion lighting directly computed into the scene uh, or pre-computed lighting loaded with shadows and everything so it's awesome uh, it's a little too dark and that's because it's applying the lighting twice once for the pre-computed and once for this dynamic thing so I'm going to go ahead and do is kill this light go to the inspector and I'm going to self illuminate by making the emission one and all three and now it looks exactly like it did in blender and because blue is my favorite color I'm going to tint the scene blue a little bit to give it that cool looking effect um, that I like of slight color that you almost can't tell is there so so now we have our scene the way we like it and I'm going to go ahead and save this so we can view it on the iPad and iPhone and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to save for mobile and I'm actually going to save this directly in my Google Drive, which I have installed on here. Google Drive Virto YouTube 2. And what this is going to do, I think I just typed that wrong. What this is going to do is actually synchronize uh, to my Google Drive the uh, Virto Studio mobile document. And once it's done, I'll be able to open it directly from my iPad, which I'm going to show you guys right now. Alrighty, here we go on the iPad Air. I just got this the other day. 
I'm going to go ahead and now go into Google Drive on my iPad and go into my Virto folder. And there's the file, so I'm just going to tap on that. It might take a few seconds to um, download. And then I'm going to open it in. Oh, I'm going to open it in Virto Studio. And then it's an Apple bug or something. And there it goes. It's coming up. And there's my file. Complete with dynamic lighting and everything. And it's the same exact process on the iPhone. So once you do this, one very important thing that I forgot to mention is that you need to do this um, for your scene. You need to select the texture properties on the iPad and you need to switch them to full uh, so that you get the full resolution. Otherwise, you'll get some really ugly artifacts for your light map. So you want to get your full 2048 by 2048 resolution. And then you need to turn off trilinear filtering. Uh, doing those two steps will help avoid any ugly artifacts you might have in your scene. You can actually go into fly-through mode. And I don't know how I'm going to do this with one hand. But the basic gist is you're actually like a first-person shooter able to go through your scene and walk through it in 3D and check it out with the dynamic lighting effects and everything. And I think I've also showed you guys the, the gyro button which would be kind of hard to show right now but it basically shows the, um, press this button here, shows the scene as if you were holding up your iPad as a virtual window into the world that you're in. So that's also pretty cool. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I hope it was easy enough to follow. Thanks for watching. Bye.